Hey guys, I'm Shwaib. Welcome to last week's tech where we talk about five tech news from last week. Starting off with our first story, we have Google discontinuing Chromecast. Google has officially discontinued Chromecast brand after 11 years on the market and during which it sold over 100 million devices. And Google is replacing the Chromecast with a new device called the Google TV Streamer, positioned at a higher end competitor to Apple TV 4K and Roku Ultra. Some of the key features of the Google TV Streamer are the following. So it comes with a much powerful, faster processor with twice the RAM, four gigabytes and four times the storage 32 gigabytes. It supports 4K HDR streaming at 60 frames per second. It has a Dolby Vision and Atmos for spatial audio. It comes with HDMI 2.1a port, Ethernet connectivity, and Matter and Thread Smart Home integration. And along with all this, there is advanced AI features through Google Gemini, which offers more personalized watch lists, content summaries, and season reviews. So overall, it's a full package in terms of the design and and pricing, the new device is more expensive than the previous Chromecast models. It's priced at $100. It's designed to be a set-top box rather than a dongle, enhancing its connectivity and smart home functionalities. This might be a great time to buy the Chromecast, even though they are going to soon discontinue the Chromecast lineup. There are still Chromecast dongles that are being available and sold today. So definitely go check it out. I'll put the link in the description below uh, for that information. In fact, it might be a great deal to get Chrome Chromecast dongles right now than any other time because the HD version of the Chromecast is going for $29.99 and the 4K version of the Chromecast is going for $49.99 and compared to this new device it's way cheaper and definitely a much better price compared to the latest Google TV streamer 4K so definitely check those out I will make sure to put the links below. Moreover the Google TV streamer doubles as a smart home hub with built-in thread border router support to improve smart device connectivity and this will just make it much more easy and flexible for you and convenient to control your cameras your thermostat any smart home device your smart lights your security cameras so you can all control all that right from your tv and this time around they made the remote for it much more smarter and also there's a nice dedicated button on the device itself for finding your your remote if you ever lose it there's a button in the back you press it and it will beep where your device is the device will make a noise and you can find it in terms of pre-orders and availability the device is available for pre-orders and will start shipping on September 26th of this year so definitely check it out Moving on, we have YouTube adding community notes. YouTube is testing a new feature called community notes and it's similar to Twitter's fact checking system and it's aimed to prevent misinformation on the platform. So what are the functionalities of this? The feature will allow users to add context or corrections to videos that may contain misleading or just false information. This is very important in an era where misinformation can spread rapidly through popular content creators and also just through the popular social media applications. So Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and so on. So this is a very cool feature to see. It has made a big impact on Twitter. Like uh, personally, I use Twitter all the time and it does make a big difference. A lot of the times the stories seem to be true, but when you look closely into it, they are false information people are trying to spread. So YouTube makes this move in response to the growing concerns on its platform about misinformation, especially for creators who are exaggerating or fabricating content for the purpose of increasing their views and engagement. So overall, this will allow YouTube to be more transparent and keep their content creators accountable for their actions and how they are presenting the information to public. So this is involving the community to, you know, allow them to fax check others. And it will help viewers like you and me to make better informative decisions about the content we are consuming. So currently in terms of the status of this feature, the feature is still in testing phase and it remains to be seen how widely will be adapted and what impact it will really have on the platform and the ecosystem overall. Moving on to our third topic, we have Figure AI unveiling their Figure 2 humanoid AI robot. And so they've recently done this. So Figure AI has unveiled their Figure 2, which is a humanoid robot designed for industrial and service applications. This robot represents a significant advancement in AI-driven robotics with capabilities aimed at complementing human tasks in various industries. I do want to make a note that they did work or partner with OpenAI 
for a lot of their AI features and whatnot. And as we know, OpenAI is by far one of the most advanced AI software or algorithm out there right now. So that's that's cool to see that they're combining it with an actual humanoid robot. And so I'm looking forward to it. But in terms of its design and capabilities, it seems really cool. So figure two is designed to mimic human form and function with advanced AI allowing it to you know perform complex tests that are traditionally handled by humans. So the robot is equipped with sophisticated sensors, articulated limbs, and a neural network powered brain enabling it to interact with its environment and perform tasks with high precision. It can be deployed in various settings including manufacturing, healthcare, and service industries where it can be an assistant or even replace human workers in repetitive or dangerous tasks. I can see this being very helpful, especially in the dangerous tasks aspects, but also what are your thoughts on it replacing human workers? You know, do you see that to be a threat in the future? You know, we've already seen a lot of tech layoffs and whatnot. So could this potentially add to that? So that could be a point of concern. But in terms of my point of view right now, I feel like it will in fact open up more jobs because you know, it's, it's taking out the risk of of, of actual human being at a dangerous task, performing a dangerous task, whereas we can put a robot and do those particular tasks, but it will open up jobs in terms of maintaining these robots. So that's my vision to it. And that's how I'm gonna go about looking into it. And I hope that's how it is. But in terms of the vision and development from Figure AI, they envision Figure 2 as a part of broader effort to integrate AI into everyday life, making it more accessible and practical. So the robot's development focuses on enhancing human-robot collaborations, ensuring that AI technologies are safe and beneficial. And especially when it's in the workplace, others can see that because many of us are still skeptical of letting robots somewhat take over and the worst case scenario but slowly integrating robots into it where humans can really see their benefits of having robots in the workplace maybe we'll be more comfortable having them around going to the future because that's definitely the future that i can foresee for sure lastly in terms of the market and future applications of this figure two is designed to adapt to various environments and tasks making it versatile tool for businesses seeking to automate processes. The robot could play a crucial role in future work, particularly in sectors where precision, efficiency, and safety are at the forefront of the industry. Moving on to our fourth topic, Samsung's battery manufacturing company, Samsung SDI, has unveiled its latest EV battery technology featuring advanced solid state batteries, SSBs, with a significant energy density of 500 watt hour per kilogram, which is almost double the 270 watt hour kilogram density of current mainstream automotive batteries. Furthermore, in terms of enhancement to driving range and efficiency, the new battery technology promises a driving range of six miles which is nearly a thousand kilometers and rapid charging capability in just nine minutes the batteries are also expected to have a lifespan of 20 years and in terms of the size weight safety and improvements overall Samson claims that these batteries will be smaller lighter and safer than the existing lithium-ion batteries used in electric vehicles currently moreover in terms of the pilot program and mass production timeline the company announced that its pilot solid-state battery production plant is fully functional and mass production of these batteries is expected to start in 2027. In terms of alignment with industry trends, Samsung's technology aligns with the global shift towards batteries with higher energy density and longer lifespan, often referred to as million mile batteries for EVs, and I'm all for it. Currently the main problem with EVs and the reason many people don't have it, and recently I was in the market for buying a new car and I was considering an EV, but the reason I did not get it is obviously the range isn't there, takes forever to charge, and also the infrastructure for charging isn't necessarily there, and also so just my concerns of the battery and maintenance overall because if I had to change the battery you know sooner than later then it may not be fit to my lifestyle. So moreover focusing on the affordable alternatives in addition to SSBs Samsung SDI is committed to developing more affordable lithium iron phosphate and cobalt free batteries. They plan to adopt a dry electrode production method to reduce costs so in the future we can see more affordable batteries in EVs which will make the overall cost of EVs go down as well. So that means more people on the road can have or drive EVs in the long run. So for future plans for rapid charging, the company aims to mass produce batteries that can be rapidly charged in nine minutes by 2026, making them more competitive in the popular and entry level EV segments. 
And lastly, for our final topic for today, we have a feature that's coming to iOS 18. And for the most part, it's been noticed on iOS 18 beta right now. So it's not officially out for everyone yet. But if you do want to download the beta and test it out, it is there. So Apple is introducing a feature that's going to allow users to play audio from apps in the background while they're using other apps or watching a video. So currently you cannot play music and also record at the same time. Stop the music and then you can continue continue recording your video. For content creators and videographers in the long run or just anybody who's trying to play music and also just film at the same time, it's not very convenient. You cannot multitask like that at the current stage. So Apple is adding this feature where you can do that. So you can enable this audio feature in the settings and you can play your music and record at the same time. So this new feature will offer users more control over playback, enabling them to pause, play, or adjust volume without switching back to audio applications. So you can do that from your phone's setting and leave it at the setting that you do like. So you, you can disable it or enable it up to your liking. So currently it's compatible with the range of applications and it will be available on iPhones running the latest iOS and that is iOS 18 and up. So once that's officially available, it should be available to most iPhone users. And lastly, in terms of the implications of content consumptions, this change is expected to enhance user experience for those who consume media from multiple sources simultaneously and could influence app developers to optimize their content for this functionality. Well, there you have it, guys. These are five tech news from last week, and this is officially the first episode of this series I want to start. Let me know about your guys' thoughts of this new series and what you would like to see in the future, if there's ways I can make it better or improve in any way. Definitely leave a comment for that. But overall, you know, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell icon. Let me know what tech news you are excited about that I have mentioned in this video. And as always, have a superb day and thanks for watching.